Be the Talk, episode 334, featuring Dara Padwo Otic. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Dara Padwo Audic. Dara, are you ready to talk? I am ready to talk. Dara Padwo Audic's genuine passion for telling impactful stories has taken her around the globe. Dara is the series creator of two nonfiction series. She's got grit and 650,000 hours and the series producer of the fiction series Visions of Rock. Dara Padwo Audic, welcome to the talk. Thank you for having me. Your talk is called Inspirations from Bhutan. And it's like, I, I look at that, I'm thinking, Bhutan, that's near Mount Everest somewhere, but it's a very, very small country. And for sure, I'm going to get it confused with Tibet or one, one of the other uh, countries you're on the, the map right, region, right there. Though. Am I really? You're up, yeah, you're absolutely in the right region. It's right next to Nepal okay. and right beneath Tibet. So that's why. And Nepal is the home of Mount Everest. Not bad at all. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I love, I, I am... I am a sucker for a good Mount Everest documentary, starting with the National Geographic with Edmund Hill Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, the Sherpa, and I think it was a 1950-ish thing, and they went back up, or maybe it was the first time, and they filmed it, and they show, you know, above the clouds in this black and white footage. It just about blew me away. You were also contracted uh, for a period of time out there, and I think maybe something happened with with the project, but, but that's basically the setting for your talk, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to you at that point. Please take us behind the talk, Dara. So it's really been a process. Um, I did that talk after my first trip to Bhutan. I've actually been back since okay. then. Um, and Bhutan has is the same and it's changed. Mm. Um, but I became interested in the whole Himalayan culture after doing a project for National Geographic in 1997 when I went to Nepal and I lived with a Sherpa family for a few weeks and interviewed some of the Sherpas who had gone up on Mount Everest in that tragic accident mm -hmm. that happened uh, that Krakauer wrote about, mm -hmm. John Krakauer wrote about uh, Into Thin Air. And, and this would be a, a, almost my dream job, except that, it's tragic, and there are all, I know about a little bit about the controversy of the the prosperous Westerners. We go over there, and then we hire these Sherpas, and that's basically the only job that you can have as a Sherpa is to bring us up and down the mountain, and then we all want to get to the top of the mountain, and then it creates a very, very, very dangerous situation. So I'm going to shut my mouth because that's about all I know, but I, I, I think this is so neat, Dara. I had read the book, um, and I had been doing um, documentary work, and National Geographic gave me and a colleague a camera to go to Nepal and do this pre-interview so that they could do a follow-up story if it, if it worked out. Um, but what came out of that for me was kind of what I had a hunch about, which mm. the... The Sherpas and that whole Himalayan culture that is a Buddhist culture is very connected to the earth and to spirit. And the answer to their experience on that mountain was that they had prayed to the gods in the morning before the climb and the mountain gods told them not to climb mm. and the Westerners just didn't listen. So they knew before they ascended that it wasn't going to be a good situation. And unfortunately, a few of them perished, um, which is a very sad commentary. But what for me, what was the most interesting part of this was that just like our Native American culture in the Americas, um, we have kind of dismissed in our fast-paced society others who have a spiritual connection to the earth and to spirit. And so I, it was reawakened to me that this was a very important issue. And so I started learning more about Bhutan 
and then ended up going there many years later. So I was first in Nepal in 1997 and ended up in Bhutan in 2008. Mm. And what I learned in Bhutan reinforced all of the things that I had been studying about our viewpoint, um, especially in the West. We're very attached to things, to people. And I became very intrigued by this Buddhist philosophy of non-attachment. Uh, so much so that when I was in Nepal, the first time I ended up giving away most of my things, I came home with wow. an empty suitcase. Wow. Um, but it, so uh, Bhutan has a policy, a development policy called gross national happiness, and it's based in nine dimensions. And they still to this day practice GNH policies. And I realize, you know, that it's not so realistic for us in the United States to be doing nine GNH dimensions on you know, on a national level, but it's definitely something that we can be doing on a local level. And we're starting to see more of that in the U.S. We're starting to see places like Seattle and Vermont and even the Happiness Summit that happens in Miami every year now. People really exploring, well, what really is happiness? What is well-being? And it's not tied to the GDP. Yeah, for it's sure. It's tied to community. It's tied to good education it's tied to good governance it's tied to psychological well-being and health and all of the dimensions that bhutan has identified and that they are trying to measure within their own population now they're not the happiest country on the planet by any means but their development policy is a very interesting and forward-thinking policy for looking at the well-being of a society my question to you at this point, because you're, you're talking about non-attachment and all of these beautiful things and referencing the, the Native American history in, in the United States, which is just a horrible history. It's a tragic history and uh, bringing some some uh, worthy uh, parallels uh, right there. And and the the attachment that we have, I mean, you want to talk about for the ambitious uh, billionaire, millionaire wannabe, uh, entrepreneur, uh, rich person, that is the ultimate status symbol. And that is the ultimate attachment for, you know, for us to go and climb Mount Everest or, or do something like that symbolically and literally. And yet the, it, it's almost antithetical to, uh, their whole po- uh, philosophy in, in a way. So the irony of that is not lost on me. Uh, the real question that I want to ask is, uh, who, who is advocating? for these people because they're they take their well, they're uh, really in a transition yeah. now you know i found a big difference so the first trip was in 2008 this mm-hmm. last trip i went with a danish filmmaker hans wessing and we have now three films um on bhutanic kingdom of happiness.com but people can look at vimeo on demand but um so then the this next the second trip was in 2017 and Bhutan has changed. They're struggling. Hmm. They're really struggling to keep their values and move forward in their technology and in their society and their youth in particular, who are extremely intelligent um, and who are, there's a job shortage there and many of them leave and don't come Hmm. back. So they're really in a transition. They just had an election um, they're a new democracy. So they just had an election and that election has a lot to say, uh, about a country that's in transition. But one thing I do know, and I know this from my Bhutanese friends, um, that because they are so deeply rooted in their Buddhism and in that Buddhist philosophy, they will transcend. They will transcend because of their non-attachment and because their belief in the innermost wisdom of all sentient beings ultimately <laughs> um they will transcend and i know this how has um these trips how, how have they uh impacted you obviously you you gave all your stuff away on the return trip so you you've been profoundly tra- changed uh it's obviously more than just giving your stuff away on on the return trip uh, what what was the most profound impact for you dara 
You know, for me, and I try to do this in my work now, and I'm not always successful <laughs> um, and in my life, but for me, it has a, we need to be connected to our values and we need to understand that our values are what drive us and that we shouldn't operate and, and we're, we're not going to be authentic if we operate from a place that's not connected to our values. And so what I see in Bhutan is that no matter what they're doing because of their philosophy and their religion, they try to stay more connected to their values by being present and their meditations and their prayers keep them more present. If that makes sense. Absolutely. And we've been enjoying this conversation with Dara Padwo Audic. Her talk is called Inspirations from Bhutan. And uh, we're going to hear more from Dara in just a moment when we pivot over to you, Talk Universe, in the Blitz round. Hey, Talk Universe. I hope you've been enjoying today's episode with today's guest. But you know what? Many people want more than that. Many people that listen to Be the Talk actually want to give a talk. And if that's you, you're not alone. Listen to the rest of this podcast. At the end, I'll have a free resource for you just for listening. It's time for the Blitz Round with Dara Padwo Audic. I'm going to ask Dara a series of either or questions related to the preparation and performance of her uh, somewhat recent talk. I believe it's a, a couple of years old at this point, which is uh, somewhat fresh and it's all good. So, uh, Dara, you ready? I'm ready. All right. First question Were you invited to speak or did you apply? I was invited by some friends who were setting up a first TEDx at Lizard Creek. And where is Lizard Creek? Because I saw that. That's the only Lizard Creek so uh, talk that I have seen. Is that a neighborhood? What What is Lizard it's Creek? It's a neighborhood in North Carolina. It was a beautiful place. And the, the Lizard Creek community was just beyond generous. Mm. We're all of the TEDx speakers. Really wonderful people. Wonderful. Dara, are you a memorizer? Are you an improviser? Or are you a blender? I'm definitely a blender. Um, very much so a blender. <laughs> What's a uh, tip, tool, or technique that helped you? Um, because I'm a filmmaker, I try to visualize things in images. And I actually wrote, <laughs> this is funny, I actually wrote down a couple of the bullet points inside my hand oh. at first because I was so anxious. But I never really looked at my hand. Um, what was more helpful to me were the images. Mm. So I created an image around a concept. And then when I would think of the image, it would remind me about what I was going to say. Which is a great way to do PowerPoints. Don't do the bullet points, do images. And then it, that's kind of how we all operate. So good for you. Uh, Dara, were you an opener? Were you a closer or were you in between? I was a closer. And you know what? That was awesome. You like being a closer? It was, I, I felt very fortunate to be a closer. Yeah. Well, so did I. I mean, when I, I don't know about you. When, when they told me I was going to be a closer, I had already prepared a lot, but I, I ratcheted it even higher once I, once I found out I was going to be a, a closer. Was that similar for you? You know, it makes the day longer because you're <laughs> watching everybody, but it also gives you a chance to change things if you feel like you need to change mm -hmm. them and then the other thing is that uh, i felt like in the end um because i was talking about inspiration and i was talking about my own inspiration and i was really striving to inspire other people about thinking about their own lives and what is valuable for them um i felt like they appreciated it at the end that it was a good way to close i got a great reception at the end it was very nice Awesome. What was the, uh, this is the cut for time question. What was the most painful part of your talk that you had to cut out for time? Um, yeah. So I showed part of a video clip and I wanted to show the whole thing and that would have taken it way, way over time, but I would have loved to have been able to show the whole thing. Here's my question for you as a, as a filmmaker. Uh, what was, what's easier for you? <laughs> what's, what's less egregiously painful for you? I guess I'll, I'll phrase it that way. Cutting from your TED talk or cutting from one of your films? Cutting from one of my films. 
It's, it's more painful. <laughs> yeah. Those are like my babies. Yeah. <laughs> but, but similar. I mean, you understand. I mean, you got time is time and priority is priority, and uh, it is uh, what it is. Uh, my last question for you, uh, Dara, what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before you spoke? Oh, my gosh. Now I have to remember. <laughs> um, you know, I, I nothing felt strange. What was unexpected was the generosity, the level of generosity of this community. They hosted all of the speakers at their homes for dinner. Oh, my. So we spent the entire weekend there. Um, they just went all out and... And the other thing that was for me, it was rewarding was meeting the other speakers and hearing their stories and talking to them about what meant, you know, the most to them about being there mm -hmm. um, and their journeys. So we're no surprises per se, but some really nice moments that just made you feel good to be there. Well, we've been enjoying this blitz round with Dara Padwo Audic. Her talk is called Inspirations from Bhutan. You can go to our show notes page to to uh, get the link to that. I believe she said Vimeo on demand, so I'm going to be checking it out for sure. Uh, you go to be the talk com. We will have a link there. We will also have a link to Dara's uh, website, Creative Strategies TV. Creative Strategies TV, and we're going to be back with Dara Padwo Aldick in just a moment for the final word of advice. Hey, Talk Universe, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want to give the talk to change the world, but you don't know how or even where to start, no problem at all. Go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted for my new five day email course that'll show you how absolutely free just go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted it's time for the final word of advice with dara padwo audic what is it for the speakers people writing their own ted talks being themselves um well, first of all practice <laughs> <laughs> you can't just go you really do have to practice and practice in front of other people so they, they can give you feedback. That's really important. Dara, thank you so much for joining us on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to be the talk.com. See you tomorrow.